Good day, everyone. Welcome to our webinar session. This webinar is brought to you by IES Research, a theme that provides research publication with an engaging voice through the adaptation of the IES storyboard of Big Y, Y, and Word. We design visuals and animation to support your research findings, maximize the understanding of the discoveries, and share your story globally to improve research visibility and increase scholarly engagement. My name is Kesi Tang, and I'll be your host today. Today, we are happy to have Iris Xu from IES Research to share about the topic on write good plain language summary of your work. Iris is a research impact consultant, and her consultancy work focuses on designing end-to-end -end research workflow that captures impact evidences for researchers. In her experience working on research outreach projects, she had the chance to deliver face-to-face -face curation training and personal consulting to researchers from different disciplines. The sharing would be approximately 15 minutes and we will have the remaining 15 minutes for questions and answers. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the session by simply using the Q&A toolbar located at the bottom center of the Zoom meeting interface or for those who are joining the session on our YouTube channel, you may type your question into the chat box. We will collect these questions and answer them during the Q&A session later. So without further ado, let me move the ground to Iris to share the screen and begin our sharing for today. Good day, everyone. Today's sharing is about writing a good plan language summary of your research work. The practice of using plan language to communicate complex ideas to people who are unfamiliar with the subject can be traced back to as early as the ancient Greek era. But to use it formally in law or government policy only began in the 1960s. The concept of applying plan language in academic research communication appeared rather late. In fact, it is becoming a norm for publishers like Wiley, Emerald, and many others to request the plan language summary to be submitted along with the manuscript. Why publishers need that? Because they want publishers from different disciplines to be able to understand the work too, encouraging the notion of cross-disciplinary research. Today, we will talk about what is the plan language summary or POS, how to write a good POS, and how to use it to benefit you as a researcher. So what is POS? According to this fact sheet by Anne McKenzie, made to improve the communication and participation between medical research and its communities, a POS is a brief outline of research which helps make information about the research work more open, transparent, and accessible. It is not dumbing down scientific information but to speak or write about research in a way that non-field specialists can understand. The keywords here are open, transparent, and accessible. And in the scientific world, another especially important keyword is understandable. A POS written to allow readers to understand the complex idea of research so that non-field specialists can comprehend the work down to a certain point without difficulties. To make research understandable, you need to communicate it in simple language. It's like writing a story of your research. So how to write a compelling research story? Research is all about bridging the gap between the ideal world and reality. What's between the gap of the two are problems which are waiting for researchers to find solutions. Research papers are generally in the position of proposing a solution to the problem addressed. So let's take a look at different types of research communication here. For example, a press release is often used to announce research findings to the general public. Since the general public might not have background knowledge to the subject, the bigger picture is presented with the description of the problem that the research is aiming to solve. For example, if we're writing a press release about a new therapy on lung cancer, we might need to address that lung cancer is the number one killer in comparison to other cancers. This is to emphasize the severity of the problem, raise awareness of the readers, 
and then announced that the new therapy has a certain positive result on curing or easing the damages caused by these cancer cells. As to more details on how the mechanism works, probably it will not be mentioned or left with minimal mentions. When it comes to PLS, the target audiences usually are fellow researchers who may or may not be sharing a similar research field. The purpose of POS is to increase cross-disciplinary communication and collaboration, so it is necessary to put more attention on the solution. The bigger picture is still important, but can be eliminated depending on the solution. A research paper is all about details, so the focus is on the problem, how to solve it, and the outcome of the proposed solution. You may easily find those statements in the corresponding parts of the research paper. And finally, an abstract is a condensed version of the research paper. When converting a research paper into a POS, it's useful to structure the text into such forms or boxes to be used and manipulated later. In IES, we further simplify it into a storyboard of big why, why, what, and how to make it more intuitive and easier to comprehend. If you have participated in our previous webinar on effective reading of full text, you might remember we also recommended the same storyboard to aid structure reading. The IES storyboard suggested could also be used for POS writing since the rationale behind it is the same which is to extract meaningful context, which could later be manipulated to convey engaging narrative. There is no standard format of POS, and there is more than one way to write one. The size of the box here doesn't represent the percentage of each session within the POS. You can manipulate the percentage or weightage of the big why, why, what, or how, depending on subject discipline, purpose of POS or target audiences. The big why is all about the bigger picture or the so what. It can help your audience to understand what are the big issues you are trying to solve and how serious the issues are. SDG or Sustainable Development Goal proposed by the Union Nations is something that the government and universities have been emphasizing for the past few years. One way you can do it is to link your research with the 17 SDGs to make the big why loud and clear and fit to the society's need. For example, medical research can easily link back to SDG 3, which is good health and well-being. Social sciences could mostly be related to SDG 4, 5, 8, etc. If your university is practicing SDGs or want to perform well in TH3 ranking on SDG, this part can resonate well with your university's policy. When writing a research paper, generally you don't need to write too much about the big why. So when writing POS, this is a part where you need to look up for some facts and explain a bit for those who are not familiar with your field. As mentioned, there's more than one way writing a POS. Taking medical research as an example, if you're writing a POS about COVID-19, at this point, everyone surely understands the seriousness of this pandemic, hence there is no need to address too much on the issue spectrum. However, if you are writing a POS about a study on a specific substance of a chemical compound, you may want to explain a bit on the background and what benefits or changes it may bring to others. In a guest, when addressing the big why of the research, it is largely dependent on the existing knowledge of the target audiences. When a POS is written for public, the big why plays the role of connecting and educating the public. If the POS written targets domain experts or non-domain experts, the big why then serves to improve attention towards the research and encourage cross-disciplinary applications. Moving on, the second part is on the why, where the actual problem that your research is aiming to address lies. In a POS, this part can be extracted from your thesis statement. 
Generally, a thesis statement is found in the last paragraph of the introduction, addressing the immediate problem of the research aims to solve and the proposed solution. Let's look at an example here. This entire portion is from the last paragraph of the introduction. The blue portion highlights the key thesis statement, while the yellow explains how the research is organized to solve the problem. Next, we're going to look at the what of the paper. What is the solution that you provide to solve the problem? Not so much on the solution process, which is more on the how part, but rather on how the solution is going to bring change to the current practice. For instance, we wrote a POS about the research that proposed to use balsa fiber to compose bulletproof vest. Questions to ask are, what's the difference of this new solution than the existing solution? Who can benefit from it? And where can it be applied? If you look at these questions closely, it becomes clear that the what part of the PLS highlights the novelty and originality of the research most of which could be found in the conclusion and elaborated within the discussion sessions of the research paper. Referring back to the balsa fiber-based bulletproof vest example, it is lighter, stronger, overperformed, even more cost-effective than the existing vests in the market. So who can benefit from it? Soldiers, police officers, security guards. If we push the concept further, Civilians can be better protected by equipping soldiers and police officers with better equipment. Where can it be applied? Globally. So the what of the POS can be something like composing balsa fiber into the bulletproof vest can improve the durability and performance of the vest, providing better protection to armed personnel globally at a lower cost. So after putting in all the hard work in writing a good POS, where would you see the fruit of your effort? At the moment in the marketplace, there are three forms in which you can publish your POS. In case you are aiming to publish your research paper in Elsevier journals, it is a requirement for you to supplement your manuscript with a few key highlights of your findings in bullet points, which Elsevier calls it as research highlight. The research highlight is more like key takeaways of that paper instead of constructing it into a story. Other publishers requesting for POS are more like the second example, a one paragraph summary in simplified language that goes side by side with the abstract. For the first and second ones, it is a part of the manuscript submission process, while the third one, which is from Kudos, where you can construct a POS of your published article. Kudos is a platform where you can publish POS and disseminate it onto social media platforms to reach wider audiences. Researchers can register freely on Kudos without paying a fee, but to explain your paper, your papers need to be published in a journal with Crossref DOI. If your research paper is not yet published or published in a local journal without DOI, then Kudos is not a tool for you yet. Alternatively, if you find writing a POS on your own is too much trouble and your time is occupied, another option is to let someone else do it for you. What we do at IES Research, including writing POS for your research papers, align your research contributions to the SDG indicators. Many researchers find that by disseminating research findings in the form of preprint, supplementing the article with a good POS, and actively promoting the research papers increases visibility. Moreover, a POS linked to SDG connects readers to the real world issue and communicates the significance of the research with wider audiences. Seeing that journal submissions are main drivers of constructing a POS, it is also important to accept the fact that simply publish a POS along with the paper is insufficient to direct the attention towards your work. A well-written POS could be converted into multiple formats, such as graphical abstracts, research video highlights, 
animations, etc., to be disseminated on various platforms to reach wider audiences. As overwhelming as it may sound, the basis of this format is the storyboard used to extract the context of your research. A solid storyboard is capable of guiding you not just through the process of writing your POS, but also to visual your work and to reach the audiences you desire by various platforms. Our upcoming sessions on draw and promote research papers would provide you with a better grasp on graphical abstract designing skills and research outreach necessity. In a nutshell, POS is here to stay. I believe all researchers regard your research as significant and impactful. However, what use would it be if only a few could understand it? In order to write a good POS, the group of audience you would like to reach should be identified. This would allow you to construct your research story effectively and purposefully. Understanding the sentiment behind the problem you're solving and connecting it to a bigger thing like SDGs or trending issues is crucial to appeal to the readers. When you highlight the normality of your research and its contribution to change or improvement, chances of your work being recognized and put into action eventually increases. Of course, this involves good storytelling skills to elaborate the details of your research work in a more compelling and engaging voice, rather than expecting the readers to flip through papers of a technical, jargon-filled report. Elaboration on details is necessary if the subject matter is alien to the audiences, and in case of the background of the problem to be solved is something audiences are not familiar with, it is best to advance the description into other aspects of the research. Finally, all that has been mentioned is not impossible if you're able to master the art of storyboarding. By utilizing the storyboard to organize the key points of your research, content could be manipulated to cater to the needs of the audiences you aim to reach. That's my sharing today. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Iris, for the wonderful sharing. Now we'll be opening up for the Q&A session. Let's see if we have any. Okay, we have one question here from the floor. How to write an engaging writing? Any tips? Um, so it depends on, so the question, how to write an engaging writing. Uh, as mentioned, you must identify your target audience. So for example, uh, if you are targeting a general public, probably you need to connect with the bigger picture, which is the big why, according to the IES storyboard. And if you are talking to a group of uh, uh, non-field specialists or non-domain experts, uh, probably you need to know what their background is and uh, also how to uh, write with clear voice without jargons. Because for the non-domain uh, experts who are not, who may not be in your research field, they might not have the same, for example, jargons or definitions of acronyms together with you. So it is very important to know who you're talking to. And depending on who you're talking to, uh, manipulate the big why, why, what in your storyboard and then uh, write in a more engaging way that your target audience can be connected with. I hope that Thank answers you, Iris. <laughs> We have another question here asking on what is construed and important or should be mentioned in the PLS and the info that should not be mentioned. Okay, so in the POS, uh, if your target audience is the non-domain expert who may not be in your uh, research field, uh, it is very important to uh, share with them on the big why and why, which is which are the most important part. As to the uh, how, which is the detail, probably you don't want to mention it because 
if we go into the how, it will be too much in detail and probably too technical so that your audience may not understand. So as the first question, uh, it is always, this, always important to know who your target audience are and then target their interest to see uh, the, the, where their interest is. And we also recommend that you connect the SDG into the POS because uh, it can link well with the society's need. And also uh, if your university or institution is practicing SDG, it is very easy to connect the uh, uh, indicator into the goal of the university and also which is very good for them to do the mapping of the research impact. Thank you, Iris. We have one question on the floor that asking, should we draft a PLS before or after publication? Well, um, you can do both actually, but if you do have a target journal that you want to submit your manuscript to, then it is, uh, useful for you if you check beforehand on their author guideline where they do require a POS or not. So for example, like Amaro, like Wiley or uh, AGUs, these publishers, they will require a POS to be submitted along with the manuscript. If that is the case, then it is good for you to draft the POS together with the manuscript meaning to uh, drive it before publication. But if you have already published the article and you want to have a POS onto it to supplement it, then you can also do that. Uh, so we, in the slide, we mentioned that you can use kudos to uh, draft a POS if your article is published. So it is also a good tool that you can write your own POS after the publication. I see. So you mentioned that uh, we can be done before publication as well. So if let's say, if I've submitted the POS to publishers, um, do I still own the copyright of the POS for my personal promotion? Um, it depends because different publishers might, different, might have different policy on the content uh, of that specific journal. So I will recommend you to read through or to contact the publisher before you do that. But in general speaking, the, if the POS goes along with that published article on the publisher's website, normally it will be openly as accessible uh, just like the abstract. Okay, so everyone can actually view that without paying anything. So if you want to use that, uh, your own POS, uh, I guess the methods of using it is probably the same as the abstract, which means you can post it, but it is best that you also uh, create a link to go back to the original paper. So in that case, you can refer back to the publisher's website and also you can refer your audience back to view your full text if they are interested by that POS. I see. Right, you mentioned about abstract. There's actually one question on the floor that asking what is the difference between POS and an abstract? A very good question. Um, the right. abstracts, <laughs> the abstract is the condensed version of that research paper. So when I mean condensed, it means that you will uh, have a uh, extract version of the introduction, the discussion, uh, the methodology, uh, discussion and conclusion, and that's it. But in the PLS, uh, and also the, the target audience for the abstract is basically the readers of that specific journal, meaning, uh, mostly the researchers or specialists who are also in your research field or related field. So in many cases that abstract uh, has 
a lot of technical terms and jargons. So uh, which uh, if you are if the reader is a non-specialist who are not or who are not in your field may have difficulties comprehending it. But the PLS is written in plain language, meaning that even readers who are not in the research field should be easily understandable. So the rule number one is uh, translate the jargon into a common words, which uh, non-field specialists can understand and eliminate the technical terms as much as possible. And also you, want, you may want to mention the big why, meaning that the bigger picture. So remember the cases or examples that we had in the presentation. For example, you, you are having a, uh, a uh, chemical compound, right? Uh, but for the chemical compound, normally people who are not in the chemical field, is, it is very hard for them to understand especially if you're uh, talking about substances or uh, you know, materials, et cetera. So if you're in the chemistry field, if you're writing a POS, it is very important to let the audience know what the benefit or what kind of change that your research or this new compound will bring to the existing solution without mentioning too much detail on how the compound is made or what the process of it behind. Right. I think just now you mentioned about some of the, the abstract contains more technical terms. And someone actually posed a question regarding if I want to search an article using PLS, how could I do that? What keyword should I use? Um, that's a very good question. So in general, PLS is something go along with the paper, uh, for example, if you are on the publisher's website. So the search will be the same as the uh, research paper. Uh, normally they don't have a specific field uh, specifying that uh, the search is dedicated to POS only. So it is not easy if you want to search POS uh, specifically. However, um, I will recommend that because PLS is something that's rather meant for disseminate and communicate with your target audience uh, as an author. So I will recommend that in the PLS, uh, don't do it passively, do it actively. So when I mention do it actively is that you, once you have your POS, you should disseminate it to, uh, for example, everyone in your contact list using the POS saying that you have just published a paper and this is what it is about. Or you can disseminate it on the social media, on, the, uh, webs on your website, whoever, do it actively to uh, push the information into the possible readers. So right. I guess this is my question, uh, this is my answer. Right, so um, due to the interest of time, I'm afraid that we may not be able to answer all of your questions raised within this session today. Um, for questions that have not been answered, please do not hesitate to drop Iris an email and she would definitely be more than happy to respond to you accordingly. So let's just pick one last question um, for Iris. Okay, let's see. Is PLS effective for editorial editors of multidisciplinary scientific journals? Is there any software for PLS? Wow, like this. <laughs> um, is PLS effective to, for editorial editors of multidisciplinary scientific journals? I think this question is actually very good because PLS is aiming for this multidisciplinary or cross-disciplinary communication. So uh, I would say that it is uh, very effective and also uh, it, show, it will actually uh, accelerate the understanding 
for people who are in various uh, disciplines. Another good way to use the POS is that uh, if you are trying to communicate your paper or research to, let's say, uh, uh, conference uh, attendees in their conference, or uh, for example, to the funders, if you want to apply for funding, because these are uh, who are not, these are people who are not in your field. So POS is actually a very good tool for them to understand uh, the bigger picture and what the change or benefit that your research will bring, uh, will, is aiming to bring. Uh, as for, is there any software for POS? Uh, in fact, it, I, I don't think there are, any direct tool that can construct a POS on behalf of the author. And if you have joined our previous webinar, uh, you might remember we mentioned about Scholarcy. So Scholarcy is actually a writing tool, uh, sorry, a reading tool, uh, which will extract the key points from the research paper. But another way that you can do is that using the scholarship to extract the highlights of your research paper. But of course, these uh, highlights are only generated by machine, which means that uh, it may not be that perfect if you have specific tar target audience in mind and it doesn't translate jargons for you. So using scholarship you can extract the highlight or key points of your paper, but if you are writing a POS, you must try to rephrase or restructure the content so that your target audience can understand better. As for another tool, which is Kudos, we mentioned earlier on, it is only a platform it, and it provides you with uh, uh, three columns empty columns, free text columns, and for you to type in your plan language summary. Uh, it does provide some guidance, but not too much. So I would say that uh, if, you, if you're going to try to write a PLS, I would recommend to use the storyboard, uh, which help you to construct your ideas into the big why, why, and what, and then you can try to manipulate it based on the target audience and based on who you're talking to. Right. So thank you, Iris, for the wonderful sharing and also appreciate all the interesting questions from the floor. Thank you for the active participation. We hope this session is helpful to you. And we will share the recorded version along with the presentation materials to your email by end of this session. Again, thank you everyone for joining our webinar and we will have more webinars in the coming weeks that covers on the topic drawing your graphical abstract by Dr. Wang Wei Fu next week and promoting your research online by myself, Kesi Tang, the week after. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Have a good day and please stay safe from this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good day. Stay safe.